The problem from this video can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link and you can download a copy of this and all of my problems for yourself. Now, if you check the website and you click on videos, you'll see there are more videos than those I've listed publicly on YouTube. You can see that there's uh, every problem covered in the workbook has either a public video or a members only video. If you'd like access to the members only video, just click the join button beneath the video player on YouTube. All right, let's jump into the problem. We're taking a look at 12.2a. This problem is on vertical analysis. Now we said our gesture for horizontal looked like this. Our gesture for vertical looks like this. We're analyzing the financial statements, not by looking year over year, looking at a timeline or some sort of trend line. We're looking up and down one single year and just looking how, at how the accounts compare with each other. Uh, now, vertical analysis is often called common sized financial statements. And we're going to learn how to prepare common sized income statements and common sized balance sheets. If I have my hamburger company here in Kamloops and I'm selling, you know, tens of thousands of dollars worth of burgers a year or a month even, uh, and I want to compare my income statement to McDonald's's, they just don't compare because McDonald's has billions and billions of dollars in revenue. And I might have tens or even hundreds of thousands. It just doesn't even relate, right? Uh, Vertical analysis helps us overcome that. And we'll see that in this problem. Let's, let's read through it. Harpreet Gill is concerned about his company's financial performance and financial position. He's obtained the financial statements of his largest competitor, Hossein Inc., and notes that the company is over 10 times larger than his. So it is making diff numbers difficult to compare. Below is condensed financial information from Hossein Inc. and Gill Inc. And you can see Hossein is just a way bigger company. Um, you know, millions more in sales and, and just bigger balance sheet, bigger everything. So let's zoom in on the income statement and we're going to do a vertical analysis. That was what the question called for. And here's how you do a vertical analysis. You restate everything you see on the income statement or the balance sheet as a percentage. Now on the income statement, everything gets restated as a percentage of sales. So I want to do vertical analysis. I'll start with Gil. We'll do Hossein in a minute, but we'll start with Gil. So let's just ignore Hossein for the time being. Don't you scratch that out. You're going to use that in a minute. I'll, I'll erase it. See, it's easy for me to erase. Um, uh, but we're going to focus in on Gil and vertical, right? So I'm not comparing company to company just yet. I'm just up and down. So here's what you do. You basically divide every number on here by the sales number. Whatever the sales number is, just divide by that. So 400,000 divided by 400,000 gives us a hundred percent. 120 divided by 400,000. Let's see. 120 divided by 400 gives us 30%. 280 divided by 400 gives us 70%. That shouldn't be a surprise given the math. 100 minus 30 is 70. 130 divided by 400 gives us 32.5%. 150 divided by 400, 37.5 percent. 10 divided by 400, 2.5 percent. 140 divided by 400, 35 percent. And the math, by the way, is working down as well, like 37.5 minus 2.5 is 35. Uh, 30 divided by 400. 7.5 percent and uh, 110 divided by 400, 27.5 percent. Double underline there. Let's do Hossein. Uh, 5 million. Now we divide every number by Hossein's sales. So 5 million divided by 5 million is 100%, our top line here is always gonna be 100%. Cost of goods sold, 2.1 million, oh my gosh. Divided by 5 million, 42%. 2.9 million divided by 5 million, 58%. 2.2 million, 
divided by 5 million, 44%. Seven hundred thousand divided by five million. Fourteen percent. Sixty divided by five million. Tw a one point two percent. I almost said twelve percent. There happens with students on tests. Six forty divided by five million. Twelve point eight percent. 150 divided by 5 million, 3%, and 490 divided by 5 million, 9.8%. Double underline there, and we've done it. So let's kind of compare these and see if anything jumps out. And, hmm, just eyeballing this, it appears to me that Gill's costs are way more under control than Hossein's, right? Uh, key numbers are, again, the big ones with big differences are like COGS. We're able to mark up, and I'll, I'll do COGS and gross profit all at once, we're able to mark up 70% over our cost where Hossein is not. So we have way higher margin. Now, maybe they're low cost, low volume. I'm not sure the, the, the competitive nature here, but we have way higher margins than does our largest competitor. Uh, the other thing is our operating expenses are lower. So our costs are way more under control. If you didn't know anything, if you didn't know these numbers, if you just saw the percentages, right, Hossein or Gil, whose income statement would you rather have? I'd rather have Gil's. So Gil is in a better profitability position than is Hossein. That I think we can say, and the reason is its costs are lower. As a percentage of revenue, its costs are significantly lower. Um, okay, let's move over to the balance sheets. And with the balance sheet, you do something very similar. You set everything to 100% based on, or based on a percentage of total assets. Whatever the total assets is, you make that number a percent, you know, they make that number 100%. And every other number is a percentage just driven from that. So let's do Hossein. A million divided by 4 million, 25% current, 75% long term. Uh, 500 divided by, again, 4 million is our denominator for all of this. 12.5% there. 1.5 million divided by 4 million. 37.5%, 50% for total liabilities, 50% for shareholders equity, two divided by four is 50, and 100% uh, for total liabilities and shareholders equity because it's 4 million divided by 4 million. Let's move over and do Gill. Gill is 75 divided by 250, 30% for current assets, 175, divided by 250, 70% for uh, long-term assets. Moving down to current liabilities, 60 divided by 250, 24%, 24.0% for current liabilities. 120 divided by uh, 250, 48% for long-term liabilities and uh, 180 divided by 250, 72% for uh, total liabilities, shareholders equity, 70 divided by 250, 28%. Bringing us to 100%. Okay, let's compare now the balance sheets. Um, so eyeballing at a few things to look at. One is just this current assets, current liabilities, that kind of ratio. And you can see just eyeballing it that, uh, Hossein has like double the current assets required to pay its current liabilities where Gil has his covered, but just 
barely. And the other thing to look at is just like the total liabilities uh, and gills are much higher. The total equity gills are much lower. Uh, I definitely prefer Hossein's balance sheet, right? It's in a much more stable financial position and a much healthier financial position. So in terms of financial performance, I liked Gil's income statement better. In terms of financial position, I like Hossein's much better. So a uh, bit of both, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a home run for Gil. It's a mixed bag here, mixed news. So I think we've done it. We've done our vertical analysis of the companies. That's just those percentages. We've commented on the common sized income statements. I think a simple comment would just be to say Gills is better because his costs are more under control. Cost of goods sold is lower. Operating expenses are lower. And therefore Gill is more profitable than Hossein. So Gills income statement is in a stronger financial position. Hossein's balance sheet is in a stronger, or. Gill's income statement, actually not, I said financial position. The word is financial performance is better for Gill. Financial position is better for Hossein. And the reason I say that is the current assets compared to current liabilities are stronger for uh, Hossein. The total liabilities and total equity are both stronger for Hossein. So Hossein is in the stronger financial position. Gill had the better financial performance. Okay. That's it for this video. Stay tuned for our next one. Bye for now.